The City of Waterloo, in cooperation with its many active and inspiring entities, presents Heart for the City, a chance to hear and see what's going on in our city and to meet people who serve you, teach you, entertain you, help you, all neighbors and like you. Make this a city on the move. And now, here's our host, the Honorable Quinton Hart. Welcome, 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 and welcome to Heart of the City. I'm Quentin Hart, proud mayor of Waterloo, and guess what? It's been over 200 days since I've been elected to be your mayor, and I've faced many challenges. We have faced many challenges in dealing with all the duties and responsibilities. We've had a lot of fun times, but we had some difficult ones also. But I continue to feel even more that it is such an honor and a priv privilege to serve this great city and I am grateful to the citizens of this city and the members of the City Council for their confidence and trust in me. So every day I'm working diligently to make sure I continue to lead with extreme confidence. But in order to serve Waterloo and in order to help us to continue to be a place where citizens feel valued, where we feel welcome, where input is welcome, a place where our seniors feel welcome and that our youth experience first-class education and envision a future right here. All of us in government must work hard and work together in a collaborative effort. And I am delighted to be associated with a council that has so much dedication, talent, and determination. And we may have our disagreements at times on some particular issues, but we are all unified on one thing, and that is our desire to serve this city and its citizens and making sure that we all thrive in all aspects of life. And I might add, credit goes out to those who have served before as well. And as this journey continues, I have dedicated myself to continued advocacy for the importance of cultural diversity, ethnic acceptance, and unity and harmony among all within our multicultural city. So the council and I are working hard to reduce your property tax levies. And as I've said, we are truly believing that we are starting to see the change that needed to take place across this city. And see, change that enhances our standard of living and provides for a full value of what we pay in our taxes. And all in all, we should all feel proud to be living and involved in this city, great city of Waterloo. And just to let you know that this is not just a platitude or some grand dreaming, I would like to take just a couple moments to support, to, to give you some information to show you that we are moving forward. And also some interesting facts from this last fiscal year of 2016. For instance, when it comes to building valuations for the entire city of Waterloo, we are absolutely great to hear that this is our second highest year, last year, our second highest year of building valuations at over $127 million. What that equates to for you is more jobs, more businesses, and more opportunity to have created a great business environment for businesses to thrive in the city of Waterloo. And also, University Avenue, we've heard so much about it, what's happening in the university, and we saw our sister city of Cedar Falls moving forward with their progress, but we are also moving forward because this week the council just agreed to a deal with the Iowa Department of Transportation for over $28 million to come to our local community so that we can work on fixing up University Avenue, the section that's in Waterloo. And you may ask, what does that actually mean? Well, transportation is a huge part of economic development. And when we take a look at the portion of uh, University Avenue that starts at the end of Cedar Falls and goes all the way to Ainsboro Avenue, we have to make sure that our business community in those areas are thriving, that we put together just this great environment where people want to build, they want to improve businesses and bring businesses to that area. And as we continue that first corridor that I just mentioned, then we'll move from Ainsboro all the way down to Highway 63 for the completion of that project. So we're thinking maybe three or four years in the making, but we're talking about improving an area that will make sure that from years to come, 
that people that come after us can enjoy the benefits of making sure we have a, a great University Avenue. And it's also interesting as well because when you take a look at Highway 63, the Logan Avenue corridor, you're also taking a look at development that's taking place there. When you take a look at Ridgeway Avenue and 63, South 63, we're seeing development. When we take a look at San Marnin and the entire area near the crossroad area, we're seeing development. So we're seeing things happening in every corridor of the city, and it's absolutely important that University Avenue has that same type of success. Another great happening that happened at the city council meeting is we just approved the rezoning of a downtown parcel so that Hawkeye Community College could begin to build their urban campus. Now you may remember several years ago there was a bond referendum that went out for Hawkeye Community College where you as citizens voted uh, in support because you wanted to make sure that the educational opportunities that Hawkeye Community College has continues to thrive and continues to impact our lives. After all, it is a community college, so it is a college that's located in the community. And so this urban center will have great programs for our diverse community, also training programs that help propel and move this community forward because we have to continue to train our workforce to be able to meet the demands of the businesses coming into this area. We also, taking a look around the community, we had some, some colossal structures that have pretty much have been left and they were in disrepair. So we've taken steps and we began tearing some of those structures down. Now you may say, well, you're tearing them down. Well, these are homes and places that could not be rehabbed. It cost too much to put in there. They were unsafe and they couldn't be rehabbed. And so we are taking those buildings down so that we can have a community where our young people, where our families can be, feel proud of the neighborhoods and community they live in. So we've tearing down, tore down some of those, but also we're working with individuals and businesses and people to make sure we put something back in place that you'll be proud of. Hydrite, Hydrite uh, Chemical uh, Company has also just made sure they put in about a 20,000 square foot building. That means more jobs. That means more opportunity. That means more business for this community. So as you can hear, a myriad of different things are taking place in the city of Waterloo. And you heard it here first. We have several events coming up, and one that we just had that I absolutely have to mention. And it was done in conjunction with Waterloo PD and some community members like Chris Jones, and I believe it was called Operation Public Service. And it was a great way to bring the community to one of the parks uh, in Waterloo so we can show law enforcement that we appreciate them and that law enforcement could have the opportunity to meet some of the residents on different terms than what normally some of those interactions are. And those are exactly the things that are taking place here in the city that are important for building relationships and, bri and bridging the community. Also in August, we have a Taking Back the City event. Uh, and uh, this coming up Tuesday, August 2nd, I believe, is our National Night Out. And that's when we have an opportunity to visit all of our neighborhood associations that are having great events in their own neighborhoods where they also have food events, they have uh, things for young people. But it's a great way for people also to understand that you can be involved in your neighborhood associations. They're there for you. They're an advocate for change in our communities. So make sure you get out on August 2nd to the different neighborhood events that we have planned. And of course you can find all of these things on our city's website. So thank you very much. So I also welcome your input, your suggestions, and your comments. You may email or call the mayor's office with contact information appearing at the bottom of your screen. But uh, something that happened also this last week or the week before, we had a uh, uh, person join us on city council that took that leap of faith. So I would like to take just a few moments to welcome Tom Powers, our newly elected council member from Ward 1. And remember, Tom was just sworn in replacing David Jones, who resigned some time ago to pursue a career in a different state. 
So Tom is a retired firefighter, so he is no stranger to the workings and the operations of the city of Waterloo. So welcome, Tom. Hey. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Uh, you, you can't go, you can't leave now, huh? No. <laughs> You're stuck with I'm us. but staying here. All right. But Tom, just tell us, tell us a little bit. We know uh, you are a firefighter. Um, you know, how, how does that um, service, how does that have an impact on the way that you're going to approach the city council? Well, I think just being a firefighter and active in the community, it's given me that chance for 29 years right. to be truly involved, either in the emergency response. I volunteered in a lot of mm -hmm. areas. was on kind of the first Main Street uh, okay. for the uptown towners, it was called at that time, and now it's <laughs> okay. developed into the Main Street. And okay. so it's, and there's been a whole host of other things that I've been active in the community on, and I certainly find this uh, opportunity as another way mm -hmm. to grow that. Well, we're so. absolutely, absolutely looking forward, not because we have seven votes now, <laughs> um, but, but having the full council because uh, I assume you've gotten out into Ward 1 and you've been talking to the citizens. Um, they're excited about yep. the future of their communities. But you're a, you probably weren't born in Waterloo. You've been here a while or 29 years. Tell us a little bit about um, uh, you and about family as well. Uh, well, I'm uh, married to Donna. I've got three sons, mm -hmm. two of which still live here in Waterloo. One moved to uh, Seattle, uh, mm -hmm. the south of Seattle, uh, after he was in the military for okay. a while, and now he's gone down. I was born in San Diego uh, at the age of 10 or 12. Uh, we moved, my father moved us back here to Waterloo, and I've lived here other than the time I was in the mm -hmm. military during the Vietnam conflict. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just came back, joined the fire department, spent 29 years there. Okay. So, uh, firefighter, 29 years. You served in the military yep. as well. Yep. Um, so that experience, so that approach, that dedication, um, that poise is something that you plan on bringing to the council. What are some of the things that you talked about? Or we, you know, we say campaign, but mm -hmm. a campaign is a movement. But what are some of those things you want to be actively involved in? Well, obviously, I'd like to stay focused on uh, public safety and mm -hmm. the way we can. I want to create a strong, uh, friendly business community, mm -hmm. both in the downtown area mm -hmm. and along University Avenue. I think there's opportunities with my work today of bringing and talking to folks in Washington, D.C., and an opportunity to mm -hmm. uh, visit with business leaders around the country uh, and bring some of those new ideas you know, there's just some really cool things right. happening in our country right now, and yeah. I think we can certainly use that here in Waterloo. Yes, we can. So married, two children, business background. Three children. Three children. Oh, I'm sorry. Two I'm here, sorry. one and uh, one else. <laughs> okay. So we look absolutely, uh, uh, this is such a, a special moment for you, getting used to this portion of politics and being in an elected capacity. Uh, but folks are optimistic about the work that you're going to bring. Um, they're proud of your service to our community and to our country. So, Tom, I want to thank you so much for answering the call mm -hmm. to get out there and serve as Ward 1 City Councilman. Yeah. So, it's thank a new, you. It's a new experience, and I'm really, truly looking forward to it. <laughs> All Thanks. right. Thank you very much. All right. Well, this has certainly uh, have been a, a great opportunity, and, and we definitely thank, uh, thank you for stopping by, and we will certainly be seeing you soon. But ever hear someone say that there is nothing for kids to do in Waterloo? And among the myriad, and yes, I do mean myriad, uh, is the upcoming downtown Waterloo Summer Olympics. So let's take a look. On this week's episode of Travel Waterloo, I go for the gold at the Downtown Summer Olympics. Hi, I'm Zay. Have you heard about the Downtown Waterloo Summer Olympics? Kids like me can come on down to six great different locations to have some fun, just like the YWCA. I know I'm excited. Are you? You can buy a pass for just $15. It's a great bargain. You can go to six sites, uh, take advantage of all their normal activities, as well as take part in a specially planned activity related to the Olympics. Here at the Imaginarium, you can test your speed at the old pitching cage, and you can have some fun with your friends with a little competition, just like me and Aaron. Another good activity is the 400 meter at the Sportsplex. Hey Aaron, you want to see if we can beat Michael Johnson's world record? Let's go. 
three, two, one, go! Hey Aaron, I got my first stamp. I heard that when you get all your stamps, you could win great prizes. To get all of your stamps, make sure you also visit the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum. The Phelps Youth Pavilion at the Waterloo Center for the Arts. In addition to all the fun things that you can normally do at the Phelps Youth Pavilion, um, you can visit the new light play exhibit. The big highlight is this new projected floor that uh, you can interact with. So you basically jump into a video game, you can run around, kick virtual balls, just, just become a part of it. And the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum. If you complete the obstacle course and climb all the way to the top of the rope, you can win a gold medal just like Dan Gable. Here at Lincoln Park, during the closing ceremony on August 12th, you, ha you have a chance to win prizes and play special games. I hope you have fun. For more information about the places we visited today, check out the blog at the award-winning TravelWaterloo.com and visit the Travel Waterloo YouTube channel for past episodes and travel ideas. Welcome back to the heart of the city. Uh, so while we are watching the Summer Olympics in Rio, and some of us wishing we can be there, well, not really, but I'd much rather be here. But, but anyway, Main Street, Waterloo, and other downtown entities will be hosting our own Olympics for kids. And to tell us more about, to tell us more about this, Executive Director of Main Street, Tavis Hall, and his Olympic athlete son, Zay McDonald. So, how are you two today? Good. You're good. You're good. You preparing for the Olympics? Yes. You ready to go? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so Tavis, tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, this. What's taking place? Sure. Uh, so, from today all the way through August 12th, uh, kids from any age range uh, can go to any of the participating uh, locations. Uh, there's going to be the Grout Museum, uh, Sportsplex, Dan Gable Museum. YWCA, uh, Phelps Youth Pavilion, and Waterloo Center for the Arts, uh, and get a pass to participate in different activities. There's mm -hmm. swimming, there's running. Uh, I think we saw some of the, the video right. uh, a, little, a little earlier. Uh, and it's just a good opportunity for kids to get downtown with their parents. Uh, you know, hopefully we encourage folks to grab a meal after, uh, right. after they, they expend some, mm -hmm. some, uh, some energy. But throughout the summer, we figured it was a good opportunity with the Olympics in the forefront of everyone's mind uh, to really kick off uh, a little bit of pride, not just nationally, mm -hmm. but locally as well. And, and there's a whole lot of things for kids to do, especially throughout the downtown. And you know what's interesting, you know, a lot of time uh, kids today, different than I was what, way back when I was uh, a child, but, you know, do a lot of video games and Xbox. And I know you don't, Zay. I know you just outside all the time play. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. But it, it really gives them an opportunity to burn off some energy. Um, and I think it's such a, a great thing. You know, I was reading, too, you mentioned all the sites. So the Dan Gable Wrestling Museum has a wrestling obstacle course, uh, Grout Museum, Agility Drills. Uh, Blue Dorn Science Imaginarium, they have a pitching cage. Phelps Youth Pavilion has soccer, Cedar Valley Sportsplex, 400 meter dash. Um, YWCA also has swimming. So, so is that, which, which one of these are you going to participate in? I think I'm going to do all of them. <laughs> all of them? Okay. Yeah. Have you been training or... You know, working out. I see the, the, the you know, the guns there a little, <laughs> little big. You've been getting ready for this? Yeah, I've been running around outside, riding my bike a lot. Okay, getting okay. Ready. All right, all right. And so you're excited about this? Yes. Have you been able to talk to some other friends yet or since school is out or you may not be able yeah, to? Yeah, some of my friends live near me in my neighborhood, so okay. I go to their houses a lot. So they're all ready to go. So I'm excited. I'm going to have to come check you out. I saw you on the video. You were doing the rope climbing. And I think we may have a rope climbing challenge. Did you challenge me or no? 
or can I do rope climb against dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely watch that. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I hope you have a great time. And, you know, we always talk about different things for our young people to do. So it's good to see our executive director of Main Street is taking that to heart and creating opportunities for yourself and other children as well. Um, Mr. Hall, though, I was wondering, I think it's four years, four years and older. Yep. Um, yep. And um, what does it go up to? Can I can't participate this time, right? We'll, pro we'll probably let you in. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's really geared towards kids. It's actually through a grant from the Waterloo Community Foundation. Okay. Uh, it's their sort of inaugural grant. So uh, we're excited to be a partner with them as well as other organizations like the, the uh, uh, Convention of Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. as well as the folks that are named, uh, those organizations that are named. So a lot of folks came together to put this on, but we're really f trying to focus it towards kids. Okay. And there's a pass that you can purchase as well, right? Correct. So it's $15. Uh, and so Is that for one activity? That's or? for all activities. Right. So on the back of the, of the medal, mm -hmm. you'll have stamps uh, that once you complete the task, you'll get a stamp. And then if you turn those in at the August 12th Friday Lou, mm -hmm. uh, kids are entered to win uh, some really cool prizes. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And um, there's a dollar for the accompaniment of the adult as well. Yep, yep. Um, so very little cost for a lot of different activities. Absolutely. Um, which to me is outstanding. Um, each site, as we mentioned earlier, uh, features something special uh, for each young person. And also, you said uh, August 12th, um, once Correct. you turn that in, the kids will be acknowledged. Yep, um, at the Friday loop. Okay, okay. For more information, who should people contact? Uh, the best place to actually look is Facebook. Okay. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, and uh, it's updated fairly constantly. So uh, connect either there or at any of the participating locations. Okay. And I'm a grandparent, and I don't have Facebook. Uh, I have my first Facebook account turned off. Sure. Uh, but they would be able to call... Um, one of the any of those locations that are selling the passes so the grout the imaginarium center for the arts uh, or fellowship pavilion rather uh, sports sports plex y. ybw okay. and the gable museum all right all right so uh you heard it and to summarize as this can be more than a one-day event uh, participants and their companions can take their time and really enjoy all that the locations have to offer and what a great way to show your kids and grandkids the great museums and sports activities in downtown Waterloo and no worries about the weather all events take place indoors so if you're looking for a cool indoor activities then these are it and for more information again uh, the Downtown Waterloo Summer Olympics, visit TravelWaterloo.com as well. So thank you, Zay, and thank you, Tavis. This is just another great happening for the whole family here in Downtown Waterloo. We'll be right back after this brief message. The Cedar Valley Sportsplex is your destination for fitness and recreation. You'll have access to over 50 classes per week in our state-of-the-art facility at no additional cost. Work out with like-minded individuals through our circuit training, aqua jam, and more. Customize your workouts on over 60 pieces of pre-core equipment. Our qualified personal trainers can help you achieve your fitness goals. Worried about the kids? Childcare offered seven days a week. And once again, and welcome back. Last year, while running for mayor, almost this time last year, I put forth a platform that included elements that I felt would lead to safer streets in Waterloo. And although every candidate for mayor or council person did emphasize the need for providing a safer environment for their cities, for our citizens, yet every day it seems that we can read about possible assaults, um, some types of shootings, uh, fire reports, um, folks being arrested uh, with gun uh, convictions, uh, home invasions, and, and some, well, j just a lot of different things that uh, we read about taking place with regards to how safe our streets are. Well, that's just one side of the coin, and in fact, we do have more work to do in the area of providing a freer crime community, but the other side of the coin is that we are achieving some major positive results with regards to crime. And here to tell us more about this is our Director of Safety Services, Dan Troca. Welcome, Dan. Thanks, Mayor. Good How are to you today? Good. All right. Good. Well, uh, last summer, some of the areas that, that I talked about um, in working with you to help, uh, and the community, 
to achieve safer streets were the conversation about expanding uh, community policing, uh, digital recording technology and a mapping system, uh, diversionary programs um, that and, and possibly a conversation about curfew, um, install in inexpensive lighting in places that we can see better, um, evidence-based alternatives to uh, incarceration for nonviolent offenders, reduce recidivism rates by working to create community-based diversionary programs, and last but not least, bringing our community together uh, collaboratively from all different sectors to deal uh, with this challenge. But when I say those things, and then we talk about moving forward to implement those things, and even before then, what is the actual trend for crime in Waterloo? Our crime rate is actually trending down in the past six Wait, wait, time out, time out. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> it's actually trending down. <laughs> okay. 2014 was a bump in the road. It right. popped up a little bit. But over the past seven years, uh, we're trending down. Okay. Armed robberies are way down. Uh, assaults, disorderly conducts, uh, traffic crashes are down. Overall, we're down over 20% in the wow. past six years. Wow. But we still have items, events that are yeah. occurring right. that grab a lot of news headlines. Right, right. And I'm not, and we're not saying that they shouldn't, um, but you're right. Um, we rarely hear about the, the downshift in crime, which is why the heart of the city is a great way for us to be able to talk about that and put some facts behind what we're actually seeing. And, you know, folks have to remember, and, and everyone remember, uh, that's watching remember, that the prevention of crime uh, is a community function. It's not just up to law enforcement, it's up to the entire community to come together to work towards dealing with some of these challenges. But when we talk about the entire community, what can the average citizen do to kind of help these efforts? Mayor, there's a lot they can do. They can call us, mm -hmm. uh, they can be a witness. Uh, some people are concerned about being a witness, uh, but it's great if you step forward, you're willing to be a witness, but if you're unable or unwilling to do any of those, do something. Right. Convince that person who's involved in the crime, if you know him, to stop doing it. Right. Or tell others mm -hmm. so that we can work for, I mean, we've had so many successes. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic about the future, especially right. with your involvement in the city and the right. police department. And we just need to keep pushing forward and we're going to do it. Yeah. And the, the interesting part, um, oftentimes when, when you, you, you know, when you go to a location, it is after something has happened. But what I'm hearing you say and hearing the trends around the country is about being proactive in making sure we can alleviate some of those situations. If someone know that something's going on, let folks know about it, get with people, talk to the individuals so that we can try to stop a situation before it actually happens. Yes, sir, because anybody who's involved in a shooting that's doing a shooting, mm -hmm. typically, statistically, that's not their first time. Mm -hmm. So if you're aware of that person, if you're not willing to testify or give us an account of what happened, mm -hmm. convince them to stop. Right, right. And you know, what's, what's interesting, this last week uh, during our council meeting, uh, we had a conversation around, um, I think one term was surveillance cameras, but we're really not talking about surveillance cameras, are we? What are we, what, what terminology are we? No, I would uh, say they're more traffic monitoring cameras. It right. just so happens that the residual result of having those cameras can assist us in criminal right. investigations. Okay, and I think that's something that people need to understand. There's not going to be a big brother in the sky looking down to see everybody's right. activities. Uh, we're talking about traffic cameras where we can monitor what's taking place in particular locations and try to help alleviate um, when there's a question about something happening or not. Um, so I think we, we probably are going to move forward, put a small community task force together with appropriate staff so that we can make sure we analyze this correctly. Similar to what Dubuque has done, I believe, but it'll be what we'll have is geared towards Waterloo as well. And um, people also hear about community-oriented policing and uh, problem-solving philosophy, which is uh, a, a part of what cops are. But, you know, I know it's a, a huge a huge conversation, but when we talk about community policing, like what is your vision? What is your vision for community policing? I like to blow all the smoke away and simplify it and say it's just about dialogue. Mm -hmm. That's why I, one good example is I love how my office is actually outside mm -hmm. the police department mm -hmm. next to your office. Right. I work for the mayor mm -hmm. and I have an open door policy. People can come in and see me, they can come in and see you. Right. 
it's dialogue. Community policing is all about dialogue. And, and you know, it's also, um, also what, what you're talking about is the ability to develop relationships um, with people because, as we mentioned earlier, oftentimes uh, we go in as a response to a situation. But we're talking about actually trying to develop greater relationships with our communities in other types of situations. You know, whether it is, what can, well, tell us about last Saturday, I believe, the uh, Chrissy Jones. Um. Yes, the great event in town. Uh, Chris Jones had uh, this picnic, basically a picnic for the public, where mm -hmm. law enforcement, firefighters, citizens got together and we had a picnic we had a dialogue mm -hmm. we developed relationships yeah. and it was wonderful well attended we're going to do more yeah and that's 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 what it's all about developing real relationships having real conversations having that door open from the governmental side and law enforcement to having that door open to our citizens homes and our communities because uh, we are one community uh, we are one big neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, so we need to start working together proactively a little bit more. And that's where your heart and commitment is at. That's where uh, hopefully our community is at as well. And Chris Jones showed a great example of that taking place. But Dan, do you have any other comments? Um, would you like to comment uh, recently about the actions? Um, taken by Officer Jordan Eilers at a serious traffic accident? Yeah, we responded. The officers responded to a traffic crash. Mm -hmm. uh, Officer Eilers was one of the first officers on scene. It was reported to us that the driver was severely injured mm -hmm. uh, and trapped in the car, uh, having difficulty breathing. So Officer Eilers shows up on scene and simply holds, secures this gentleman's head uh, so he could breathe more easily, cleared his airway, and as a matter of fact, the gentleman came into my office today, oh, wow. and we had a very emotional meeting because he was right. so grateful okay. for the officer's actions. All right, and that's just one example of what takes place um, often. It's a tough job. So, um, you know, thank you, Dan, and thanks to all who serve in providing us with public safety. And I know it can be uh, rewarding. Uh, it can be a difficult job at, at times, but we all know that in emergencies, we dial 911. However, however, if you have a question or information to provide, call the non-emergency number at 319-291-2515. Or if you know something that we should know, call Cedar Valley Crime Stoppers at 855-300-TIPS or 8477-855-300-8477 or, or online at www.crimestop.com. Stay with us. We will be right back after this message. Launch your kids into a world of wonder, discovery, and learning at the Phelps Youth Pavilion at the Waterloo Center for the Arts. Your child will design and build their own dream house and so much more. Get to the Phelps Youth Pavilion where art launches a world of wonder, discovery, and learning. Welcome back. Uh, we have seen that there are events in athletics going on all across Waterloo. And we have just seen a preview of the downtown Junior Olympics. And we know that Irish Fest will host several different Irish type competitions, including rugby. Uh, we also have the Cedar Valley Court Kings basketball team and so much more. But did you know that on Sunday, August 7th, there is another sporting event for the whole family called Lift Up Cedar Valley. And to tell us more about this event, is Jim Itis, a nationally known senior Olympian, also celebrating his birthday on that day. So welcome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, you know, I, I almost thought that when we started this that we probably need to check your ID <laughs> because I, it says that you will be 77 years old. I mean, but you look incredible. Thank you. Avid power lifter and sprinter works out six times each week and I'm only at four or so so I'll have to up that a little bit more national and state powerlifting champion holds silver medals in sprinting and gold medals in lifting at the senior Olympics pastor in 1981 founded the Cornerstone Fellowship Church and you're on YouTube as well I mean when do you have time for anything else it's, I call that life. You just, <laughs> okay. You're always, I call it the circus. Right. I'm in the circus. You go from one thing to another. Right. And right. I, I tell my wife, you know, 
We just pulled out another coupon. Okay. And uh, so we'll move on to the next coupon. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about, little bit about this event. Uh, this started, uh, I think it was 1999 when I turned 60. Mm -hmm. uh, I got all excited to be 60. And I even had my own jacket made. I said, I'm 60. <laughs> right, okay. And so uh, I put put on a show at our church on my birthday, mm -hmm. and I just deadlifted. Okay. And uh, so uh, I decided that I was going to do that every year. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one way or another, I do something. Mm -hmm. And usually it was around weightlifting. And so about 12, 13 years ago, I decided to start sprinting. Mm -hmm. And so now uh, Central's got the perfect bleachers. Right. I've been training out there now for, in the summertime, I bet 11 years. Wow. And wow. Uh, I have what I out there, what I call the course. Mm -hmm. You run both bleachers <laughs> okay. around the track. Then you go to the second bleacher mm -hmm. and go around the track. Oh, wow. And... Uh, and then we do the, I have several people that do that with me. Wow. And uh, now the record holder mm -hmm. last year was age five. Oh, wow. Really? I, I thought he was leaving the ground. <laughs> wow. Now Dawson, he lives in Ankeny now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I think he's going to be there. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Wow. I, had to, I will have to come try that. It is the greatest workout because the running the stairs mm -hmm. works your muscles different than anything else right. you can do. Right. And uh, yeah, it's really to, great for your heart, the whole nine yards. I'm going to have to get some footage of that. I'm going to have to come try that. Um, so, so it says uh, um, senior Olympian. Um, what's that like? Uh, the, for the senior Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, most people have never heard of the Senior Olympics. Right. I don't even know how I found it. you got to be over 50. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I started sprinting. Now, I've been doing deadlifting for many years before right. that. Okay. was not with the Senior Olympics. Mm -hmm. But then now, as I get older, uh, I love to, to sprint. I do the 100, the 200, the 50, and the 400. Wow. Okay. And so... Uh, uh, I've been to quite a few different states. Mm -hmm. I've been to three already this year. Wow. Okay. One weightlifting and uh, three for sprinting. Okay. And so I got started to go uh, to the Senior Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, training for something. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people ask me, do you exercise? I say, no, I train. Right, right. Because for me to train, I call that part of the fountain of youth. Right, right. You're training to go somewhere. Right, right. And uh, so uh, I got started doing that. And I used to have a little challenge because at the Senior Olympics, and when I went to Las Vegas, there were over 1,000 people there. Wow. There was a 70-year-old lady there from Florida mm -hmm. setting pole vault records. Wow. Wow. I, I mean, I was 70 years old. I could pole vaulting. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and uh, that, and when I started out, there was always somebody there that could beat me. Right. Was. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but I noticed that nobody ever heard of the Senior Olympics. Mm -hmm. There was never any newspaper there. Right. There was never any TV cameras there. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the first time... Mayor, I ran a 400 in Greeley, Colorado. Mm, wow. And now when I was 70 to 74, mm -hmm. that was a big division. We right. filled the whole track. Wow, okay. And the 400, the guy that won that did that in one minute. That's a uh, 400 meters in one minute. That's like a college student. Right, right. And I thought, you know, that's very inspirational. Mm -hmm. I would think the news people would be out here yeah, covering too. that. Me too. Wow, so. that's special. So, you know, you mentioned uh, age 60 on and putting on shows and doing those things. But what got you started in this? You know, I know the obvious reason, healthy. But what, what got you started into so much physical training? and? 
uh, it's kind of it's kind of like getting into the ministry. People say, "How'd you become a preacher?" I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just evolves into that. But uh, when I was 13 on up, I I had my first backache when I was 13, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, we had an experience with Christ and after I had, I was a heavy equipment operator. Mm -hmm. And so I tipped a crane over, flew out the front, landed down there, then I was, I was really done for. Mm -hmm. And I was walking all crippled up and so uh, the guy at a gas station he yelled at me. I'd never met him before. He said, why don't you get somebody to pray for you? Maybe God heal you. That changed my entire life. Wow, okay. okay. Yeah, and so then I began to, uh, we knew nothing about the Bible or anything. So anyway, I just started weightlifting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to a meet. See, it's hard to explain how that happened because it just kind of evolves. Right, right. right. Yeah. So. And so I hold the record for older people in Iowa, a deadlift of 500 and some pounds. Mm -hmm. I benched uh, 350 some pounds. Okay. And uh, uh, I don't really do it like that anymore because I've, I've cut down about 15 pounds mm -hmm. because I love to sprint. Right, <laughs> okay, okay. So, I mean, just very inspirational. Um, for all of you that are in the, um, the listening audience or viewing audience, um, being in shape, healthy living is so important um, to our long-term, long-term lives. So um, we definitely want to encourage you. Um, the program of Lift Up Cedar Valley is August 7 from 4 to 6 p.m. at Central Middle School. Um, at, that's the Waterloo Stadium at 1350 Katowski Drive, and that's in Waterloo. If you need more information, contact Kelly Leisure at Kelly Leisure. L E A S U R E at gmail.com, or you can call 319 621 4379. And Jim here is wishing you a happy birthday and a successful event and success as you continue to compete in the future Senior Olympics. You are certainly an inspiration to all on how age is nothing but just a number. So thank you for spending time with us and don't go away. We will be right back with more to come from Heart of the City. I'm Chinese. I am Russian. I am East African. I'm Canadian. I am Filipina. I am Irish. I am Bulgarian. Korean. I am American. I am Brazilian. Italian. Mexican. I'm British. Swedish. French. I'm Israeli. Mongolian. I'm South African. Japanese. We are mankind. We are back, and I want to share just a few more things going on in this very exciting city. Coming up is the now nationally known Irish Fest, August 5th through the 7th, and with that admission, there are many free activities for children of all ages, and the nature of this event needs no explanation, because I believe that they may still be looking for more volunteers. So please go to irishfest.com. They even have an app for your smartphone as well. Friday Lou is still going on with strong, strong, with top live bands, great food and drink. And you can see the upcoming events at Lincoln Park on MainStreetWaterloo.org. August 12th features P&V and the Phantoms, a five-piece band out of Charles City playing classic rock and blues from the 70s and 80s. So Friday Lou, always free, always fun, and always on Fridays. And again, great times are available at Lift Up Cedar Valley on August 7th at Central Middle School in Waterloo, at the Waterloo Stadium from 4 o'clock to 6 p.m. And you can check it out on Facebook. Then there is a great baseball at the Riverfront Stadium as the Bucks have home games August 4th and 5th and the fireworks on that Friday. And it's just one exciting event at the stadium. So bring your kids and check it out at waterloobucks.com. Be sure to check out the River, Lithum, River Loop Rhythms at the River Loop Amphitheater downtown next to the Waterloo Center for Arts. Free admissions, food and beverages are available upon purchase. 
and we have two more concerts coming up. We have the Positives on August 19 and the Sires featuring Brooke Strauss on September 9. So much information, a lot of activities that I can only touch on just a few. But if you are looking for something different to excite the kids, try attending the Touch a Truck sponsored by the Junior League of Waterloo on August 13th at the National Cattle Congress ground. Great event for the kids to come and see up close and personal all the big trucks that they have questions about. There will be an assortment of vehicles with helpful adults to explain and let them touch. More information will be at the National Cattle Congress dot com or you can call 319-234-7515. So for people of all ages, it can certainly be a great day in Waterloo. Thank you.